this what you see is a 4000 watts motor speed controller that I'm going to use for DC motors now guys this is going to be the part 2 video and the link for part 1 video will be provided in the description you can check it out that video contains the wiring the connections and a few tests with induction motors a few resistive loads and universal motors high speed up to 14,000 rpm do check it out so for this video or project I'm going to use this ply board and I'm going to mount this controller on the ply board with the help of two provided screw slots and the next most important component is going to be a 35 amperes bridge rectifier without the rectifier the controller and the ply board look somewhat like this now let's make a point for drilling a hole for the rectifier now let's do the drilling and I'm going to use a screw to mount it properly and strongly on the ply board okay so with that being done let's move on to the connections of the rectifier to the controller so guys the two blue wires that you see are the AC terminals as indicated on the rectifier you see so these two blue wires will be connected to the output terminals of the controller these two are the output terminals line and neutral output as indicated here so blue wires will be connected over here and the overall output of this entire circuit is going to appear on this green wire and orange wire and it is going to be positive and negative accordingly because the output is DC so let's do the connections of the blue wires and here it's complete now it looks somewhat like this and guys this is a 24 volts DC motor so I'm going to use this motor for testing this controller it is just 24 volts and I'm going to run it from 60 to around 220 volts max like I'm going to force it okay so because it is a uh, free load like it is running freely no load has been given to the motor so it is not going to consume much of the current and run easily without burning out so let's start it This is a pretty big DC motor with a big flywheel attached and it has 180 volts, 4000 RPM and an input current of up to 4 amperes. So I'm going to run this with the controller. So guys that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching it this what you see is a 180 watts monochromatic loom solar panel as you can see that the open circuit voltage is around 21 volts DC and today in this video I'm going to test a few appliances to run them directly on 220 volts so for 220 volts output I'm going to use a computer UPS and as you can see I have connected the output terminals of the solar panel directly to the UPS and the UPS is on so it's time to run few loads this is a 18 watts bulb LED bulb so this is the first load that I'm going to connect to the UPS and let's hope it works as you can see that it is glowing and 
uh, it is working even without uh, the battery. The UPS has been connected directly to the solar panel and the bulb is glowing pretty good. Now comes a 100 watts incandescent bulb Philips. So let's try this one. As you can see that it is glowing but it is automatically turning off and also it is not glowing at full potential. It's very weak so it's not able to run it. Now comes this fake 200 watts Parax IP66 LED panel. Okay, so I'm going to connect this one. They say that it is 200 watts, but I hardly think so. Okay, uh, so the panel has been connected to the output terminals of the UPS and as you can see that it is glowing. Although it seems like uh, that it is flickering, but in actual it was not flickering. It is just in the recording. And as you already saw that since 100 watts bulb could not glow. So what is the possibility of a 200 watts? So hence it was fake. Now comes this induction motor fan. It is 70 watts and as you can see that it is working perfectly alright. And uh, this indicates that the power rating output can be a max of around 70 watts and not more than that if we run it without a battery. Now guys I also wanted to try this 700 watts drill machine as well. And uh, let's press the button. As you can see that it is trying to run it but the power output from the UPS is not enough to do so.
Well guys, finally after a long wait, you can see I've got the wind. It is not very high speed wind, but still it is enough to start it up. And these are the two wires coming out from the turbine. You can see nothing is connected. Now all that remains is a continuous test of the voltage that it is generating at such a low RPM. And accordingly, if we don't get like high wind speed, then we can calculate if the wind speed is going to be this much, then how much is going to be the generated voltage according to the RPM. So guys, let's measure the voltage. Here as you can see at present, it is producing around 5 volts DC. And the voltage is increasing and the weight is also increasing and now the speed is reducing maybe it was just a gust oh. it just produced around 5.8 volts let's keep on waiting I think it should increase here I've reached around 6 point uh, you're close to 7 volts which is pretty good, more than 7 volts. Well, this is the max I have reached yet, 7.3. At least finally I'm getting 7.3 volts. So guys, I've been waiting here for the wind for a long time and it is not increasing. So here I'm finishing the video. But yes, so when I get the wind, I'm going to make a third video so that the RPM of the generator is going to be at least 300 RPM so that it can produce around 12 to 13 volts. At uh, 600 RPM, it produces around 24 volts, which is pretty good. But right now the wind is very low, it just started. Still, it is only 5.8 volts as I can see from here not good enough so once that happens i'm going to share that video with you very soon till then bye bye